Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Bethany Brings Books. I'm Bethany and it's been a while since I've been on here. <laughs> it's been a while since I've filmed anything, like a couple of months. Honestly, it's just been really busy. Um, the last video that I put up was a Bible video that I filmed a while back, like a couple months ago. And I have a few things that I'm working on, but I just haven't sat down and actually filmed anything recently. So today, I'm going to try to remedy that and get some stuff filmed, hopefully. So, I want to do a wrap-up. Um, well, not really a wrap-up, more like a recent reads video because I haven't really done, I didn't do April or May. And we're coming up on the end of June. So, I, I'm going to do this as a recent reads and just talk about what I've read, um, what I read in April and May, really. And then I'll try to do a June wrap-up at the end of June. So, I've got my little journal here. This is my reading journal. I'll show you all what I did for April. Like I've said before, I'm not big. I, I'm not great at doing all the artsy stuff. Like, I could if I sat down and worked at it harder, I guess. But... <laughs> This looks kind of crazy, but yeah, this is what I, this is, this was for April. I really didn't take that much time to work on it. Um, it looks like that. So in April, I read 10 books and which was uh, quite a bit, um, but the, a lot of them were Nancy Drew books because I'm trying to do a, I, I thought I would have this done way before now, but <clears throat> I wanted to do this thing where I read five different Nancy Drew books from each of the different Nancy Drew series. Um, and then just did a, like a vlog where I talk about them and review them and kind of compare them and, and stuff. So, I have been working on that and I, I've read four. I've just got to read the fifth one. I've already filmed like after the other books. Um, I filmed pretty much, I think all of them I've film my thoughts on. I'm going to show y'all those to start off. I'll go ahead and show you those because I'm not really going to talk about them here, but I will show you the ones that I did read um, in, this was in April. So I read, first I read um, book number four, The Mystery of Lilac Inn. Then I read book um, 104, The Mystery of the Jade Tiger. And I was trying to do like a four theme. <laughs> Just to kind of give me some kind of connection between the books. So, this was book 104, The Mystery of the Jade Tiger. Then this one is Case 4 in the Case Files, um, Smile and Say Murder. And then the Nancy Drew Girl Detective series. This is number four, High Risk. So, I've read those four. And then I'm going to read the current Nancy Drew series. I'm going to read, I was going to read the fourth one, but then I realized I had already read that one when I picked it up to read it. So I'm just going to read the fifth one in that series. But um, I had fun doing that. I really have had fun doing it. Like I said, I've kind of been busy over the past month or two. So I read all these in April and then <laughs> didn't finish in May. I was going to finish up in May and read the fifth one. But I didn't do that. I'll do my thoughts on those in a later video. Okay, so the first thing that, the first book I read was A Cowboy for Keeps by Jody Hedlund. Um, I gave that one three stars. I'll put a picture up here. It was a library book. I've read Jody Hedlund before and some of her books I enjoyed. Bailey from Bailey's Bookshelf read this and really enjoyed it and I was just in the mood for something different and I, I was like, you know what? And no, I saw that it was a marriage of convenience. So I was like, I'm going to give this a try. Jodi Hedlund is a little bit of a, so her books, for me, they're just lighthearted, easy reads and they can be kind of formulaic and um, predictable. And so that, this book was kind of, it fell on the same lines. So I didn't go into it with super high expectations. I went into it with the thought of wanting to just read have something just I was in the mood for a good western type book like was I was surprised because I haven't been in the mood for one of those in a long time like I haven't really gotten read much western stuff in ages for me I just didn't find it like mind-blowing or anything it was very predictable but 
I just enjoyed it for a light read. That was very much like April and May. I read a lot of light reads. May I really didn't read a ton. But April and May together, I just read a lot of light fluffy reads. And I would say that this is definitely that. Anyway, let me tell you what it's about. It's a young lady who has become a mail order bride. I think, I think it's a mail order bride. Anyway, she decides to marry this guy who lives in Colorado and take her younger sister. Her younger sister has like a lung disease. And so she thinks that the Colorado mountains will help, help her sister be able to like breathe better and help her lungs. I think she has like tuberculosis or something. They go out west and when she gets there, the man that she was gonna marry has, is not there. He left like several months ago to go on a trip. I can't remember where, like somewhere across the mountains or something and he never came back. So they think that he died in like a um, snowstorm or something. Anyway, his friend, ends up agreeing to marry her he has a this guy has a cattle ranch and he um i think his name is wyatt i think and he has like a cattle ranch and he wants to expand his ranch and so the mayor is trying to get families to come to town and like he wants the town to grow so he wants more women to come to town and men to find, you know marry and build families and stuff so he agrees to help him get more cattle. If he'll agree to marry this lady, what was her name? Her name is, oh, I can't remember her name. But anyway, <laughs> and it's that story. It's the story of them, like they have a marriage of convenience and she's trying to figure out how to make things work. And he's trying to figure out how to save his ranch. And he has like four brothers and sisters, or three brothers and one sister that still live and Pennsylvania um and so there's a whole story behind that and the rest of the series will follow the brothers and sisters but anyway I've talked about this for so long <laughs> and it's only a three-star book but yeah for me three-star book uh I am I'm still reading the series just like I said for fun light-hearted reads so um then I read one of the I survived stories I survived the eruption of Mount St. Helen I gave the, that one five stars. Um, I have it somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. That was a, it was a good addition to that series. Um, I've been like kind of reading the series slowly. And this one was set in the 80s, I think. I think that was when Mount St. Helens erupted. But it was interesting. It just kind of told the story of Mount St. Helens in Washington State, I think, um, erupted. We just follow, like, you know, with all of the I Survive stories, we follow a fictional character who is involved in that event. So I thought it would be, I think it would be like a great book for young readers who like history and want to learn more about history. It's a really good, really good story. Um, then I read Hitty, Her First Hundred Years. That one is a Newbery Award winner. So this one won the Newbery Award. I'm not sure. Let me see. It was published in 1929. So I'm not sure if that's when it won the Newbery Award. Like around then, like then I would guess. It is about this doll and someone carves her out of wood. And it's just kind of about her journeys through the years. We see like from her perspective, she can't move or anything like that, but she can think <laughs> she can't talk or anything, but she can think. And so she's telling, this is like supposed to be her memoir. Um, it opens up, she's like in an antique shop and she starts telling her stories through the years. So she was, somebody made her in like, I think the early 1800s. And we see her, how she gets, she travels like with the first girls. Um, that owned her her father was a ship captain and she ends up traveling on the ship with her and then things happen and it's cute it was a little bit slow at times for me but it was later on it picked up like I think maybe maybe towards halfway through it picked up the pace and we just see how she travels I mean she ends up traveling like all over the world she thinks like about all her past adventures and what this person that has her now would think if they knew where she had been and stuff and it's it's just it's a cute story um I gave it four stars like I said because it was it was cute 
but it was a little bit slower paced. I'm trying to work on reading the Newberry books, so I read that one. Then I read this, The Silver Shadow by Liz Tolsma. This is one of the books in the True Colors Historical Stories of American Crime series. These are all, it's a series that each book is, is completely standalone. They're not connected. Um, each story is a fictional account of a true crime story, like a historical true crime story, which I find so fascinating because I enjoy true crime to an extent. Sometimes I have to I have to be selective because sometimes it'll creep me out and get me paranoid. But I like really like historical true crime. Um, and so this series, I have quite a few of them back here, right here actually. I found I found a couple at the bookstores and then uh, like used bookstores. And then a while back, ChristianBook.com was doing a sale where they had like really cheap, like a dollar ninety nine or something each. So I ordered a bunch of them. So yes, this is the first one that I've read, and this one is set in early nineteen hundred Denver, Colorado. And there is this man who is attacking women. Um, the weird thing about it, though, is that they're just, it's just like random women that are walking home at night, usually alone or maybe in pairs with other women. They are not assaulted any other way just than, like, being hit over the head. And they might, like, you know, lose consciousness and stuff. Um, but nothing else. Nothing stole from them. They're not attacked in any other way. They just get hit over the head and knocked unconscious. But then some of them die. A few of them die. And, and that is like, the story is that, that's what the story is based on, that true happening thing that happened. The fictional part of the story is um, a reporter named Polly Blythe. She's a female reporter. She hears about the story and so she starts following the story and we see her adventures with that and she has there's like a police inspector, detective, whatever you want to call them, who is tr like trying to investigate this and so we just see her and his relationship and as they're kind of working together to figure out what's going on. I found overall the story itself pretty interesting. I feel like the idea of it was really good. I just the telling of the story felt kind of flat for me. I think I gave it, what did I give it? Three stars. I felt like the characters and everything could have been a bit more developed. Anyway, if you're interested in these though, I would read it. And I, I, um, if you're interested in like true crime, especially historical true crime, yeah, it's worth reading. Um, but it just wasn't a favorite or anything. Then I read The Horse and His Boy. This is the third in the Narnia series. This one I gave three stars, no, I gave it four stars. So this one, I did not find this one as intriguing as the rest of the series or as it didn't have the charm that the, the first two did. It's really set with completely different characters. Um, we do see, we do see a couple of the children, a few of the children, they come into play, but not of really as main characters, a couple of the children from like The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. But anyway, it's about like a horse who talks and he joins up with another horse and they're trying to get to Narnia and it's kind of them and they're the people that are riding them, riding them, a boy and a girl. They end up meeting up together and they're, it's their travels to Narnia and stuff. And anyway, like I said, uh, not the best one so far, but it was still good. Still had some good themes scriptural themes and I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. I want to go ahead and start the fourth one. I've, I started it, like read the first chapter, but I haven't read it anymore. But anyway, read that one. And then I read, I'm going to hold these two up. I'm not going to talk about them a lot because I'm going to do a separate video talking about them. But I read these two books and these books were by far my favorites of a, of uh, April. Um, Dangerous Beauty by Melissa Coslin and Where the Road Bends by Rachel Fordham. These two books, y'all. Look at all the tabs in the Rachel Fordham one. Look. 
So, it's funny because I read these back to back and I, I read them because, so I had heard them mentioned before. They were already on my radar. This one, this one I had a copy of because I, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, I really want to read that book because it sounded so interesting. Katie from Paperbacks Ponytails like raved about it. Well, then Oshina did a vlog recently where she read some of her uh, booktube friends' favorite books. And so she read this one. But she also read this one. Um, she read both of these recently and raved about them. I was like, okay, I need to give this a try because um, this one I definitely knew I wanted to read. But the Rachel Forham one, I really, I had seen it, but I hadn't really like, I've read a couple books by her and I enjoyed the first one. The second one was kind of meh. Didn't really, it wasn't anything spectacular. I didn't even keep it. I read it and then gave it to someone else. So I really hadn't really thought about picking her books up again um I kind of was like she's not really an author for me well everyone raved about this one a lot of people talked about how how it, how it had redeeming love vibes but cleaner um or not necessarily cleaner but not not all the content that redeeming love has which I like redeeming love but um I just thought if it had that same vibes I would be interested in this too so I uh, started listening to it on audiobook on the way home from my trip to Charleston back in April. <sighs> Y'all, I was like, oh my gosh, I was just feeling all the emotions listening to it. And I was like, I, I just, I've got to, I've got to buy my own copy and read it. So I bought a copy, started it over. I was like 40% finished, started it over because I wanted to read it because I really have a hard time paying attention to audiobooks. Started it over and... It was so good, y'all. It was so sweet. It was just heartwarming and sweet. And it was just precious. So precious. Just, I loved it. I loved it so much. So, I'm not going to really talk about these here. Uh, I'll tell you what they're about. But I'm going to do a separate video talking about both of them together. Um, and reviewing them together. Because I want to be able to go into all the details and stuff. So, this one is about a young lady who... Someone is trying to traffic her, kidnap her, get her involved in human trafficking. And this guy at a truck stop um, sees her and realizes what's going on. And he calls, like, the police, I think. Or he calls, like, the authorities. Well, anyway, she's from another country. And so, basically, what's going to happen is she's going to be sent back. And the same thing's going to happen all over again. So, this guy tells, asks her for her to be, you know, become legal, he can marry her and, or for her, be, her to be able to live in the U.S., he can marry her. And so he proposes to her and it's just absolutely nothing else. Just sit there marrying for her to be able to stay in the U.S. and not have to get back into the trafficking. And right off the bat, I'll say it's not just a random guy off the street, like as someone who obviously has knowledge of human trafficking and what's going on. And He's a bit mysterious from the start, but you do, you begin to see like more details emerge. Phenomenal book for me. Like I loved it. I just, it just, it was, it just really, it really got my heart thinking about human trafficking and all the issues with that. I loved how she wrote both of the characters, the realness that we see like in their thought process how they are just making decisions and um, how they communicate with one another and they're not, he's not like pushing her and she's, she's, he's very um, compassionate with her and treats her very respectfully as, as a victim of human trafficking. And so it was just really well done. I loved it. Um, and I'll talk more about it in that other video. This one is about a young lady who is on the verge of getting married. Um, she's kind of about to enter a marriage of convenience so she can save her form, basically. Um, and she finds this man on her property who is wounded and just very much, um, he's like about half dead. So she takes him home and she begins to care for him and he wakes up and like she, he stays there for a few days. Some stuff happens and it's just, it's a beautiful story. I can't really go into detail about a lot of what happens, but it's, if you're looking, if you're looking for a good redemption story, this is beautiful, 
beautiful, beautiful redemption. Um, it, it just the love and the sacrifice, self-sacrifice in this book. It's, it's beautiful. So I can't wait to talk more about it in the next video. I'm going to probably go ahead and film after I do this. Go ahead and film that one. I'm excited, y'all. Really excited. So to talk about it because it was so good. Definitely on my top books of the year. Both of these. So May. Oh, and I want, I want to show y'all this. I got this. I put this sticker in there because that little doll made me think about Hitty from the Hitty book. <laughs> um, my favorite that I read was, it was a hard decision between Where the Road Bends and Dangerous Beauty, but I think just Where the Road Bends slightly edged it out just because of the how, just the redeeming quality, like the, the redemption and redemptive nature of it, that the faith content and stuff. Okay, so May, very brief reading month. I read three books in the book of, three books in the book of May, three books in the month of May. Um, very slow reading month. I went on vacation, so I was getting ready for that. And then we were gone for like over a week or about a week. And it took me a while to recuperate from vacation. <laughs> so I really didn't read a lot. Um, but I read, I read, oh, I forgot. I read, so I actually read one of those Nancy Drew books in May. High risk. I read that one in May. Um, the other three books. I read four books. I said I read three, but I read four. The other books that I read were, one of them was The Love Audit by Anna Conwell. Um, I, I've seen this one really hyped on booktube and bookstagram. So, and Bailey, um, she loves it, this book so much. So I was like, finally I was like, okay, I need to give this book a try. So I ordered it um, from Amazon and I thought I'd give it a try and see if I liked it. Then I would maybe order, order some of her other ones. This is a debut book, it's indie published, um, and it was really sweet. I enjoyed it, I think I gave it four stars. Very sweet story. Um, I love the banter in here. Um, we have this girl, what is her name, Lottie? I think that's her name, Lottie, who works at this office building. Her name is Charlotte, but they call her Lottie. She works in an office building and um, like an auditing, I think she does like auditing. For this company i don't remember what the company is is it a bank maybe i think she anyway they're involved in creating some kind of app for the bank and um sh her and the guy that's like involved in the process kind of butt heads like they meet each other and they butt heads and it's like it's like an enemies to lovers type thing they're like co clashing constantly but their banner is so cute and just on point making me laugh out loud um I look what I like about this is just the characters there's four best friends who all live together and each book is about one of the friends this one is about Charlotte like I said Lottie and I just like the camaraderie that they have um these are really fun light reads very easy reads if you're looking for something fun and light to read really good rom-com I really enjoyed this one I've read three in the series this is my favorite one the first one um and what I what I, what else I really liked about it is that it's super clean super sweet and there's also while it, it's not classified as Christian fiction but there are a few faith elements in it that I really appreciate um I would say I will say like in the rest of the series there's not so much on the faith elements but the rest of the series is still super clean um and which i like in a rom-com because a lot of rom-coms just have too much innuendo and even clean rom-coms i don't like a lot of them just because they have t they have too much stuff like that like innuendo and off color stuff that i really don't appreciate so i really like this one if you're looking for something clean this one is really cute um, I have a tab. What did I tab? Let's see. Oh, this one. Um, he says, his mom says, tells Callum, sometimes we need people to get under our skin. A life of constant comfort isn't a life worth living. That just really spoke to me. Like, I just it really connected with that. that. You know, life isn't, it's not meant to be comfortable constantly. Read that one. Then I read One More Song by Anna Conwell. I was on a roll. I decided to go ahead and go with it. 
This one's really cute too. I gave this one four, three or four stars. I don't remember. Another cute story. Um, it's about one of the other friends. It's a, what do you call it? What trope is this? Um, second chance romance. So she had a guy that she was talking to when she was younger who basically like fought off from her to pursue his country music dream. And now like, I think it's like five years. He has come back into her life and he's actually the brother of the female character in this book. But anyway, he's come back into her life. Her best friend asked her to sing in her wedding and he's going to play the guitar and write a song. So anyway, they're trying to work together for this wedding to create, write a song together. Cute story. I enjoyed it. She did address like some deeper themes. As far as like some of their childhood trauma like her childhood trauma things that she had gone through she had fear of being like her mom like always chasing someone who really didn't want to be with her um chasing a man who really didn't want to stick around and so that affects her current relationship status and so it was good like i said another lighthearted read um, I like the first one better. I felt like the plot was more developed in the first one. I feel like I feel like the story itself could be really well done with just a little bit more time and attention. If you're looking for a good clean rom-com, then I would say go for this one, this series. Then I read um, Always on My Mind by Susan May Warren. Me and Bailey from Bailey's Bookshelf were going to buddy read this together, but some things, she had a lot of family um, health issues, some things that would happen, some circumstances, so she wasn't able to finish it, but um, I wanted to go ahead and finish it because I was like, I had already read like 50% of it when everything happened, and it was a library book, so I was like, I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Um, we've been buddy reading the series, the Christensen family series together. This one is the fourth one in the series. And it follows, let me give me just a minute if I can remember the names. Who was it? I'm trying to remember the names. I'm terrible at remembering names. Raina and I can't remember his name, but anyway, it follows him and Raina, <laughs> the other brother, the one that, so he's like, He's gone off to an island somewhere to do like archaeological treasure hunting. Um, I can't say a lot because a lot of what this book centers on is about a plot twist in the last book. So I can't really say a lot. But it involves Raina and her love interest, one of the Christensen brothers. And I can't re I cannot remember what his name is. But yeah, they're kind of together in a situation and they're just having to work it all out and we also have like some historical stuff going on because um she Raina becomes involved in like working with an antique shop and helping um go through an estate like the things the valuables of an estate and there's some journals that she's reading and going through so there's kind of like a little bit of a mystery going on with someone and something that happened a long time ago so yeah see all that happening too so i think i gave this one four stars it did address heavier topics um not like too heavy like nothing that i think would be difficult to read but yeah overall i enjoyed it i'm enjoying susan's books yeah. for really for their their easy reads and she usually has good themes in them. They're not like for me personally, they're nothing they're not spectacular mind blowing books like oh my goodness, favorite book of all time. But they're good reads. I enjoy reading them, seeing what's gonna happen next, following this family. I really enjoy following the family. Um, that was another thing I liked about this story was that we see Derek and Ivy in this book. Cause usually what Susan does is has a main story and then she'll have like another storyline and kind of going in the background in the book too and this one we once again see Derek and Ivy who were in the first book and we see him dealing with some issues again that he kind of struggled with in the first book which I really appreciated that about this story 
I love a lot of times when we read like a standalone book and someone has issues at the end it's like resolved you know it's like oh okay especially if they have some kind of trauma they're having to figure out how to cope with or something and a lot of times you're like okay I would like to be able to see them work through that and realize it's not an instantly healed process you know it's something they have to keep dealing with and I really like that about this that she brought it back to them they were in like the sad story and you see him having to cope as he's he's married him and Abby are married now and he's having to cope and deal with some of the things that he kind of worried about and struggled with in the first book so I really enjoyed that about this that was that's what I've been reading the past few months this month I've read some amazing books y'all really good I can't wait to talk about them in my June wrap-up I'm not going to talk about them here but yeah I'm I'm excited to talk about them but so uh, my favorite book that I read last month was The Love Audit by Anna Conwell. That one was just, it was just fun. I enjoyed it. And this is what I did for May. I didn't show y'all, but I did all the little donuts for, I did the little donuts for The Love Audit because that's, and especially pink, pink and donuts and coffee. Those were some of the essential things in the book, so. was cute that is what i read in may i will talk to you guys later thank y'all for watching and i will see y'all in my next video bye